my Master of Ceremonies, John Markoff. Um, he wrote a book about Doug, but most of you may know him from the New York Times. Anyway, John Markoff, thank you for being here. Um, you know, I think we're all familiar with the frustration that Doug felt about us not getting his larger point. And, and that was driven home to me um, after my obituary ran. Um, I was interviewed a couple of times, and you know, both times people said, you know, wasn't it unfortunate that Doug invented the mouse and he didn't profit from it? And I just thought, you guys, you just don't get it. You know, how much don't you get it? And it's, it's so, it's so uh, evocative of sort of where Silicon Valley is and where Doug started from. You know, Silicon Valley largely uh, you know, made itself out of profiting from Doug's ideas. But Doug's ideas were not about what Silicon Valley is about today. And, you know, for me, Doug, first and foremost, was a humanist. And uh, he really saw uh, designing technology to, to support human ideals. And that's what set him apart from so much of where we are today. And so I, I, I did just briefly want to st uh, start at the, at the beginning, because after um, Doug died and I, I wrote my obituary, I got this sweet note from someone who served in the Navy with Doug in Manila in 1946, a man by the name of Townsend McCoon. Um, and I just wanted to read, uh, actually I'll just read two paragraphs from it. Any, if anybody would like me to send uh, a, a copy of the longer letter, I'll be glad to, but um, it does capture a little bit of the spirit. Uh, Townsend wrote, my U.S. Navy association with Douglas Engelbart began in December of 1945 when I arrived at the Navy radio station, NPO, located just south of Manila on Luzon Island in the Philippines. Doug had preceded me there, but only by a short period, as Manila was not liberated from Japanese occupation until March of that year. At the time, Doug was 21 years old and I was 19. We were both part of a small group of electronic technicians at the base assigned to maintenance and repair of radio transmitting and receiving equipment, which the Navy used to communicate with both ships and other island bases in the Western Pacific Ocean. And I just wanted to, to read this one, this one uh, paragraph, which I think captured a lot. We all looked up to Doug to help us with technical problems as they developed, largely problems caused by changing atmospheric conditions, which required frequent changes in transmitting and receiving frequencies to optimize the communications reach of the station. Although we greatly admired Doug's technical capabilities, we of course had no idea then that he would later become such a heralded leader in the development of computer systems. He sure did. 